everybody, it's the Shy Genealogist and today I want to show you how to use GIMP, the photo editing software, to add some text to our photos. Today I have a different photo. I have a photo of a family group from 1915. And what this actually is, was a desperate cousin who was only allowed to have access to the photograph for a very short time so she ran to a Xerox machine and made a Xerox copy of this photograph. So this is the only photo I have of all of the members of my great-grandparents family and this little boy right here is actually my grandfather. So what I want to do is add some names to this photograph. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. The first thing that we're going to do is just try to type some text on the photograph itself. So over here we have a letter A and that is the text tool. We'll click the A and we see some options down here. We can choose a font, we can choose a size, and we can choose a color. And looking at this photo, black might be difficult to see, so perhaps I want to change this color. Now I wouldn't actually print it this way, but to help us see it easier, I'm going to pick red. Red will definitely stand out on this photograph and it'll make it a little bit easier for us to see what's happening. To pick your color, you can click around in here and you can see what the color would be right now if we did nothing and what you've changed the color to. If you decide that you wanted a light blue, you could kind of zero in on your color here and then fine tune it over here. But I'm going to stick with that red color if I can. Here are some of the most recent colors that have been chosen so if you want to go back to something you already had you can use that option to find something that you liked from before. Once you pick your color you tell it OK. Now as long as I've got this A selected my icon's just going to look kind of like a letter I and I'm going to draw a box where I'm going to want to start typing. So I'm going to put a name right above this young man's head and this is Velber. When I type I can tell that that's a little bit smaller that I might like. So here I can highlight that text and increase the size here in this little menu that pops up or I can do it over here. But I'm going to just uh, start increasing that size. That's kind of hard to read because of the highlighting but I can tell the size of it is getting better for me. I also have a few options here. I can bold it or italicize it or underline it or put a strike through in it, but I'm going to italicize it. And then to help me see what that looks like a little better, I'm going to come up here to this tool that looks like a plus. That's just the move tool and it just kind of clears away that text box so I can see a little bit better what's going on. Now if I decide I still want to change that, I can click the letter A and double click inside there. Maybe I also need that to be bold to be a little easier to see or I want to increase the size but I don't want to spend a lot of time here so I'm going to increase that to 30 and I'm going to remember that number because I'm going to want all of them to be the same size. If I click anywhere else it thinks that I want to put a text box there but as long as I don't type in it nothing has happened. And I want to show you that over here, instead of the history tool, which I talked about last time, we're going to be using the layers tool. So now I have a layer that just says Velber. I'm going to add another text box right here. This young man's name was Lester. I'm going to want to try to keep all the same settings as before. So I'm going to come up to 30. And I'm going to italicize it. Now I'm going to move up here to the to the top young man. His name was Asa. Again I'm going to make all the same changes. So you can see that I could uh, keep going with this method and I could name all of these people using this method. But by writing on this picture, they are definitely a little bit difficult to read. And I'm not sure if making the text black would help that. So I would much prefer to have text above 
or below or maybe both on this photo. So let's talk about how to do that. Let's come back to this Undo History tab and I want to go back before I added any text at all, just back to my base image. Now what I'm going to want is a little bit of blank space below and I think I'm going to put a little bit of blank space above and I'll put the back line of names above and the bottom group of people down below. To do that I'm going to come up here to Image and Canvas Size. I'm going to change this from pixels to inches because my brain comprehends that better. Now this is a pretty big picture. This is almost 10 by 7 and a half. That's something to keep in mind if you think about potentially printing something out. But right now I'm just going to look at it and say, okay, that's a pretty good sized picture. If I click this little chain, whatever I do to adjust the width will keep the same type of change going for the height. So if I click up once on that arrow, I have added an inch to the width and an inch to the height. Down here you can see a little bit of a preview of what that's going to look like and if I click on center it's going to automatically put that image right in the center of that frame that we've put all around it. Now because this image is pretty wide I'm going to reset this and I'm not going to click on the chain. I want to add to the height of this picture so I've got a little bit of space above and below. So I'm going to just click there and by not attaching that chain that doesn't change anything to the width. Notice this picture is sitting at the top of this space so I want to center it top and bottom so I've got a little bit of space above and a little bit of space below. I click on resize. Now you can see I've got some space on the top and the bottom and that checkerboard pattern means that right now it's transparent. There's really nothing there. I'm going to come back to layers so we can keep an eye on what's going on. Now I don't want that area up above and below to be transparent so I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to come to the layer tab and say new layer and it is going to be the size of the entire frame and I need to tell it what color I want this new layer to be. If I pick foreground color, right now it would pick that red, the box that's on top. If I pick background color, then it would be the white. I can pick white or I can say keep it transparent, but for this we're going to keep it white. Now it looks like it has totally taken away our picture, but what's actually happening is that this layer, this white layer, is laying on top of our photo layer. If I click on the eye, then I can hide that new layer and see that the photo is still there. But I want it to show up, I just want the photograph to be on top. So while this area is highlighted, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click that down arrow and that's going to put it behind the photo layer. So now we're going to think about what we did in our last video. I'm going to click in the photo layer. I'm going to come, I'm going to change my foreground color from red to black. There are HTML codes for all the colors and black is six zeros. I can see there that that's what I've got. I'm going to tell it OK. I want to add a border around this picture, so control A to select all. And you'll see that I've got a dotted line just around the picture. It's not going around the whole thing, it's just going around the picture. So now when I come up to edit and stroke selection, I want a solid line. I want it pretty thin, a tenth of an inch might be a little too thick, but we'll see how that looks hit the stroke and there is my border around um, that part of the picture. Now we're going to add some text above and below. I'm going to hit my letter A. I'm going to draw a text box right up here and I'm going to put those people's names up at, in that section. And because I've got the black color on top here, my text now will be black and not red. So as I begin to type, I've got Velber, I've got Lester, Asa, 
Clint and Floyd. Notice that it kept the centering that we had set from before, but I want it to be bigger. And now since I'm so close to the top, I can't see my entire menu up there. I'm going to have to use this menu over on the side. Let's just jump right to a 40 and see how that looks. That looks a little bit better, maybe even slightly bigger. I can do that. Here I can tell it I want it italicized and it's already centered, but I could change that uh, using these options down here if I wanted. Now I'm going to add another text box because we're still in the A. When I move my cursor, it knows I want a new box. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put those names in. highlight those names I'm going to italicize them and they're already centered now notice up here at the top I've got a typo I've got a period instead of a comma so what if I want to change that over here I've got layers with each of these sections that we've typed in so I'm gonna click on the layer with that group of names I'm gonna come in here and double click and click as many times as you need to to get where you know you need to be with your cursor I'm gonna come back and fix that so anytime you want to come in and fix something you may have to double click or triple click just to get the section that you want I also would like to go ahead and center this a little better top to bottom so I'm gonna bring that down some and I'm pretty happy with this down here I want to add a border around the entire thing not just the photograph so to do that I actually want a border around this giant white box I'm going to click on that area I'm going to type control a to say that I want to select all of that area notice that dotted line is moving all around the entire thing it's not showing just this picture this time I'm going to come to edit stroke selection I'm gonna keep the same size of line here as I had before hit stroke and now I've got that border around the entire thing if I decided I wanted to come back and adjust these boxes a little bit more I could you'll just have to play around with it until it looks the way that you want and once you've got it where you're happy with it we can go ahead and export it I'm going to click on file not save as but export as and it's going to keep the name that it originally had unless you change it this is the 1915 Oliver Smith family with names export that you may need to slide the slider a little bit I want to see that preview and I'm gonna click on export now we've got a nice photo that could be uh, the cover of a book or in the middle of my genealogy report to show how these different people are and that photo will be saved within the same folder that you had it in originally unless you move it to a different folder when you do in your export. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and that you have lots of fun with labeling your photographs.